Hey guys, it's Core Ross, and today we are checking out the Red Magic 6 Pro. This is a gaming mobile phone that I've got a review unit for, so we can actually check it out and see how good it is. I've also got the cooler as well you can attach to it, and of course all this stuff has a lot of RGB lighting, and this is a high-end phone, so this has got 256 gigabytes of storage and 16 gig of RAM, and you can set the screen to go up to 165 hertz as well. And right now you can see my unboxing experience for this. So I've been using this phone for just over a week now, and in the box that I got for it, and I don't know if this is retail packaging or if this is kind of review unit packaging, but it's got a quick charger USB-C charging unit which is really good. It's also got a USB-C to USB-C cable. Nice looking red one as well, which is very nice to get a kind of stylish looking USB cable. And we've also got the manuals and all that along with like the SIM removal tool so that you can get your SIMs into this phone if you want to use it. And a kind of basic case as well, which I actually use because if you don't use a case, this phone wobbles when it's like just flying flat on its back with a case on. It's nice and stable. So you know what? It's definitely not the worst, but it is a little bit ugly. It would be kind of cool if it was maybe just like a matte black. But all these items do come in the box if you buy it. However, this separate cooler double fan unit is completely separate. And like I say, this thing has RGB on it as well. So if you're like, I'm not a mobile game gamer, but if you are like one of those hardcore mobile gamers and there is more and more of them every day, then I guess this kind of unit is something you might be very interested in getting. So, you know, it's certainly there as an option, but the mobile phone itself does have its own internal fan too, which we'll get onto shortly. But anyway, let's get to looking at the phone itself. So it comes in this kind of protective plastic, which unfortunately didn't come off in a satisfying peel. It kind of more like ripped off, unfortunately, but it, you know, it served its purpose. It kept the phone very clean and very good for shipping. And you can see this thing is huge. It is the biggest phone I have ever owned in my life. And it's also definitely the most powerful too. So big ass screen, nice kind of stylized back, something very different from a lot of phones I've seen. You've got a bunch of different cameras. You've got RGB lighting, which we'll actually go over shortly. And something which is amazing, there's actually some functional RGB lighting. It's got two shoulder buttons, of course, for gaming. It's got USB-C, it's even got a headphone jack, and it's got a couple of holes in it as well. And another first for me is I've never owned a phone with an underscreen fingerprint sensor. It's also got this red button here which switches on the fan and kind of puts it into gaming mode. Have a listen. So this fan certainly makes a racket, but of course I understand the reason for it. If you're gonna be using this as a gaming phone, it is going to get hot. So having a fan in there just adds to the performance. But anyway, let's actually do some gaming on this gaming phone. But of course, like I say, I'm not a mobile gamer, but we can play the Xbox over the network on the phone. So I thought that's what we'd do. I'm actually play some Rainbow Six Siege, see if we can get a couple of kills using a mobile phone screen and of course a controller connected in order to play it. Now, this is of course not using the phone to its full potential of what it could potentially be for a gamer out there who's dedicated to the mobile gaming kind of side of things. But I thought at least this was a good way to check out how good the screen felt, even though of course we're streaming over at 60 FPS. So, you know, we're not taking a full advantage of this screen, but at least I can see how clear and clarity it is and it's a nice screen. So I'm gonna open up a couple of esports packs to kind of get into this, cause of course they're super exciting and we can get both duplicates, can we? Anyway, so yeah, I've been using this phone for about a week. So far, I'm quite liking it. There's a few settings I would love to see them add in with some software updates, like being able to toggle off fast charging, because if you plug this into the fast charging plug that comes with it, it will spin up the fan. Now you can go into the settings and actually switch the fan on, but the fan being on is actually good for fast charging because it makes the battery last longer by keeping it cool. But it'd be nice to be able to use that charger and just not have fast charging on. But of course, you can just use another charger that isn't fast charging. But when it comes to other settings on this phone, there's quite a lot, like addressable RGB. You can actually mess around with a little logo on the back if you want, and there's two kind of strips which light up too. 
they're actually useful, which is really cool. So if you put your phone face down and you're charging it, the green will flicker on and off. And then when it's fully charged, it'll just go to solid green. This is actually really cool. I really freaking like this. And of course, this is fully customizable, so you can do whatever you want with it. Plus, you can just switch off if you don't like it. Anyway, I got into a game off Rainbow Six Siege. And as you can see, it's match point. It's on round three already. And my team is losing big time. So I decided to pick Yana. Yana has been one of my most picked characters this season and it's all down to the Gun 6. Like I don't really like the Gun 6 on any other character, but on her with the frags, oh my God, I absolutely love it. And I basically, I've never played Yana much since she came out and I've been playing her in ranked now. This is mental how much I've been enjoying playing her character. And it's just because of that gun and the frags together. So I actually managed to get a couple of kills. So that was, uh, I was quite happy with that considering I was playing on a mobile phone. And to be honest, it actually looked really freaking good. And it's also, I'm of course streaming it as well. It actually played pretty damn well. And uh, I had a little bit of fun playing on the phone here. But anyway, guys, that's my look at the Red Magic 6 Pro. There's also a non-pro version as well if you want to go check it out. And this is not a review, so this is more of an unboxing and overview. And I can have first impressions of this phone. So far, it seems pretty damn cool. I've never had a proper high-end, like, you know, something this kind of kitted out phone before. And it's very, very cool to play around with it. It also seems to be set up pretty well. The Android implementation needs a couple of new settings and stuff, but other than that, it runs great. It's nice to have a very high refresh rate screen. And of course, you can go into the settings and actually choose what hertz you want to go for, either the fastest or somewhere in between, depending on how much battery it might be eating up for you. Another thing is the battery seems to be pretty damn good, lasts quite a while. But again, I'm not a mobile gamer, so that may be a lot less for you guys if you're out there. And that's it. If you are like a proper mobile gamer, let me know in the comments below. What games do you play? How often do you actually sit down with the phone and actually play stuff like this? And is this kind of phone, which is really expensive and high end, is it the kind of thing you would pick up? But anyway, guys, that is the end of my unboxing and overview of this phone. Like I say, I've been using it for a week so far. Very much enjoying it. And I'm curious to see what you guys think in the comments below. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching. I'll catch you next time.